Hello, I'm Martin Lucker from Silicon Labs. In this quick start video, I'll show you how to get started developing Matter devices using Simplicity Studio by creating a light project. To get started developing for Matter, you'll need some development boards. The boards that I have on my desk are all based on the Silicon Labs EFR32 MG24 multi protocol processor. This allows the development of IEEE 802.15.4 based networks like Thread and also it supports Bluetooth which is used by Matter during commissioning. The board that I'll be mainly using during this quick start is our ProKit board. This is the large one here. This board allows different radio boards to be swapped on and off so you can evaluate different Silicon Labs parts. And the main advantage of this board is that it provides enhanced power analysis and network analysis features. The Ethernet connector that's also on this board makes it easier to do large network testing. We also have dev kit boards. These small boards feature a large number of sensors like gyroscopes and microphones. So they're really great for rapidly prototyping your device applications. They also feature a quick connector so you can use that to connect to uh, many available third-party hardware devices that feature the same connector. Our entry-level board, the Explorer Kit, features a couple of buttons and LEDs, but you can still expand its capability by making use of the micro bus and quick connectors that are there. We're also working with partners to create low-cost boards. This SparkFun board features an MGM240P module that has the MG24 inside it. Simplicity Studio is the unified development environment for all Silicon Labs technologies, SOCs and modules. You can download installers for various platforms from the scilabs.com website. Once you have Simplicity Studio set up and running, you'll need to install an SDK for the devices that you want to work with. You can easily do this by connecting the device to your PC using a USB cable and clicking the install button on the toolbar. The install by connecting devices option is the easiest one to use. Select the device that you want to install the SDK for and click the next button to begin the installation. The auto option will install the recommended development packages for the connected board. And then the installation of the required SDK files will begin. The installation complete, we can close the installer window. Support for Matter development is provided through an SDK extension. To install it, click the install button once again and go to manage installed packages. In here, you can select the SDKs tab and under the Gecko SDK 32-bit and wireless MCUs, Click the install button for the Silicon Labs Matter extension. Once the extension is installed, the install manager window can be closed. And we're now ready to start creating Matter applications. The larger perspective selected in the upper right is your starting point for creating applications. If you select a connected device, it will display in the overview tab information about that device and you can access manuals and documentation for the devices that are connected. You can also view additional documentation in the documentation tab. And the compatible tools provide useful utilities for working with devices and code. But over here in the example projects and demos tab, you'll find many examples to get you started creating your application. Before we begin creating a Matter application, we'll first need to create a bootloader. In the example projects and demos, if you search for 1MB, you'll find this bootloader SOC internal storage, single image on a one megabyte device example. Click create to create the example for your application. In the new project wizard that opens, I prefer to append the board name to my project name in case I make the same project for a different board in the future. Once you're happy with the project name, click the finish button to begin creating the project. 
When the project creation is finished, you'll be taken to the Simplicity IDE perspective. This is where you'll do your main development work. It will automatically open a README file for the project, and also the project configuration file will be opened here as well. We don't need to make any changes to this project, so we can simply click the top level project folder in the Project Explorer on the left, and click the Build button with a hammer icon on the toolbar to begin the process of building the application. The console here will display progress as the project builds, and if there are any problems when it's completed, they'll appear in the Problems tab here. Once the build's finished, we're ready to flash our binary into our connected device. Under this binaries folder, you'll find binaries in various formats. I'm going to make use of this .s37 binary. If I select it and right click, I can choose flash to device to open up the flash programmer. Because I'm starting a new project with a new bootloader, when I program in the bootloader, I'm going to erase the whole chip by using the erase button. Once that's done, I can double check that the binary file is the one I selected in this window. I can also check my board uh, is the correct board. I only have one connected here and click program to transfer the bootloader binary into my ProKit board. With the bootloader in place, we're now ready to create our first matter project. So returning to the launcher perspective and with my board selected in the debug adapters, from the example projects and demos tab, I can filter down to just matter examples and demos. And I want to create a light device, so I'm going to do a filter for light as well. So here we have the Matter System on Chip Lighting Over Thread demo. For the demos, you can simply click the Run button, and those will program a pre-built binary into the connected board. However, I'm going to create a project, so the examples without the demo indicator will create a project with source code that you can then later go on to edit and adapt to your own needs. So let's click the Create button, just like we did with the bootloader, to begin creating this project. In the new project wizard, I'm going to append the board number to the project name once again. Just to avoid any confusion if I create the same project for a different platform. And then I'll click finish to create the project in my IDE. With the project created, the configuration file is opened in the Simplicity IDE perspective and also the README for the project. This has lots of useful information. It describes how the project runs on various boards and it also contains link to additional documentation. Let's take a look at some of the time-saving features that Simplicity Studio offers you for your development. The .slcp project file here is where you'll access most of these. Under the Configuration Tools tab, you'll find access to a couple of configurators that will be useful. The Zigbee Cluster Configurator is where you set up the data model that is used that defines the way your device operates. If I take a look at endpoint one for our light here, we can open up the general clusters and take a look at the on-off cluster. The on-off cluster is used to control the light by issuing commands that will manipulate the on-off attribute and hence turn the light on or off. If you're developing different kinds of devices, this is where you'll come to configure the clusters and attributes that your device will need to operate. Similar to the Zigbee Cluster Configurator, we also have the Bluetooth GAT Configurator. And again, this defines the Bluetooth services and characteristics that are present in the Bluetooth side of the device. This is set up ready to use for matter commissioning, but if you wanted to create a multi-protocol device that maybe offered control over Bluetooth in addition to matter, you could come and do some work in here to set that up. On the Software Components tab, we have a wide variety of components and drivers that you can use to set up sensors that might be on your board or things like buttons and LEDs. And these usually take a couple of clicks to add in support for the feature and configure the pins that are used. Let's take a quick look at the simple LED that's already been installed as part of this application. So for LED zero, we can go in and 
we'll take a quick look at the configuration for this. And in here, you can see the configuration for how the LED will operate and the pin that's been selected is also set up here when an instance of a simple LED is created. And you can add buttons and other devices in a similar way. If I return to the configuration tools and take a quick look at the pin tool option, this is where you can associate pins with peripherals at a low level. But obviously when you do this directly here, you won't, you won't get a driver for that. But the act of adding a component like the simple LED component will configure the pin. So you can see here, we've got simple LED zero set up on PB02. And that came purely from adding that instance of the simple LED component. So the software components are a really good time saver to give you some code to operate peripherals and configure the hardware pins that are required during your development. So let's build a project just like we did with the bootloader. I'll select the top level folder here and use the build icon on the toolbar. Once we have the S37 available, we can right click it and select flash to device. I'm not going to erase the flash this time because we need to keep the bootloader in the, in the flash of our ProKit board. All I'm going to do is program in the new binary for the matter part of the device alongside the existing bootloader. Once both the bootloader and matter binary are programmed into the device, LED zero will flash occasionally, indicating that it is advertising over Bluetooth looking for a network to join. And in the case of the ProKit board, a QR code will be displayed on the LCD. This can be used to commission a device into a network by scanning the QR code. There are two more videos in this quick start series that show you how to commission a light. The first shows how to set up a Raspberry Pi as an open thread border router. That particular setup is most useful during development as it gives you full control over the network and the devices in it. The second video shows you how to commission a device from an end user perspective, bringing a device into a network formed with a Google Home Nest Hub. If you want to experiment with other device types in addition to the light, in the launcher perspective of Simplicity Studio, you'll find them under the Example Projects and Demos tab. So that brings us to the end of this quick start video. You should now be ready to start developing Matter over Thread devices using Simplicity Studio. For further information, visit our documentation page shown here. Thanks for watching.